Hello everybody, welcome back, C Ray Tech here. Uh, in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys the Beta 75. This is the DSMX version. Um, this has 7mm by 20mm, 17,500kV motors, 43mm tri-blade props, uh, Z01, well, the updated Z01 camera with added support for Betaflight OSD. It's got the F3 flight controller, once again, with support and built-in Betaflight OSD. It has a power whoop connector for your battery, so you can run a uh, ton of different batteries. Um, I like to go between the 260 milliamp hour batteries and the 450 milliamp hour batteries. I'll have links to those in the description along with this. So, um, I have been hearing a lot of grumblings about issues with getting the Devo set up with these. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and run through that for you real quick. So, go ahead and stand by. I'll get Beta Flight up and then we'll get ready to go. Alright guys, so I'm back. Let me uh, get Beta Flight up. We'll get this bad boy plugged in and take a look and see what we need to do. So, um, well, I should say I've already flown this one, so it's already configured. So what we'll be doing is we'll be reviewing the current configuration and what I needed to do to get this up and running. So, got it plugged in, turn on my transmitter. All right, so let's go ahead and connect. So the first thing that I always do and it's some, sometimes it's difficult because of the USB cable. So what I've been doing is I actually use the box that the um, Beta 75 comes in. And I'll just make sure that it's nice and level sitting on the box. And then uh, you can run the USB cable down into it, kind of loop it around. And then you're going to want to calibrate your accelerometer. Another thing you can do too is um, you can set this on three of the four. Um, mounts on the table too. So we'll get this calibrated. Alright, so we're good there. So we can go ahead and set this back down. So definitely note um, if you have any questions or you want any reference material, if you go to betafpv.freshdesk.com, which I will bring it up for you real quick right here. This is going to have all the information that you're going to need. This is going to give you your advanced configuration so you'll have all your defaults and everything. So we'll go in here, we're going to make sure that our UART set correctly, which is good. We're going to want to turn off uh, motor PWM speed separated from PID speed. Now this is on by default, so you're going to want to turn that off and make sure that your minimum throttle is set to 1050, maximum 2000, and the minimum commands of 1000. So once you have that set, we'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit. We're going to want to take a look at, um, you can put in your craft name here, um, and then we'll look at what the features are, what features are set up. So um, I, I have my telemetry on and my OSD. Um, I don't currently have anything else on at this time, and then I leave all this as default. So if you make any changes, do make sure that you click save and reboot at the bottom, otherwise they won't be applied. Um, going through your, uh, set up your battery and power stuff. Um, I set my minimum voltage to 3.2. By default, it's set to 3.3. Um, here are my current PIDs. They are default. I've not made any changes to these so far. Um, what I do normally do is I'll, I'll up my RC rate and my super rate. I've been going to about 1.15, 1.2 for RC rate, and I've been going from 8.0 to, uh, I'm sorry, not 8.0, 0 to 0.85 for my Super 8 so far. I've been playing around with Expo a little bit, but not too much. But these are my current rates as of right now. So if we look at my, um, sorry, if we look at my uh, receiver menu here, you'll notice one thing that's a little bit off. Well, there's a couple. Um, my roll right now is sitting at 1499, so I'll have to sub trim that up to 1500. And my pitch looks like it's a little bit off, so we'll make some changes there. But one thing that I had an issue with when I first got this was is I got it bound. Um, everything was set up correctly, looked like it anyway. And uh, it wouldn't arm. I was, it was kind of driving me crazy. 
And then I realized that my throttle value was, I believe, it was just a little bit below a thousand, so it wasn't registering. As soon as I upped it to where my minimum throttle was at a thousand, um, you could even up it just a little bit more, it, it armed just fine. Everything's been fine since then. So yeah, you'll definitely want to make sure that you have your uh, center points set for these. So what I'll do is I'll go into my uh, transmitter real quick and I'll make sure that I have my sub trims set correctly. So you'll see these values change when I change my sub trim. Now, um, what you'll want to do is once you get these set, um, just check them every once in a while. Sometimes these will these will get off a little bit. So as long as these are set to 1500, it'll fly just fine. Um, so let me get this pitch back down to 1500. All right. If you guys have any questions on how to actually set your sub trims, uh, definitely check out my Beta 65S full setup guide. That includes all the information that you'll need in order to bind, um, set up your receiver, and to make sure that your RX channels are set correctly, or your range channels. So um, after I zeroed all these out and had it bound, that was the last thing I really needed to do is uh, change my RX channels. So um, right now I only have angle set for this, um, just because I've been flying it indoors. So you'll want to make sure that when you um, when you arm that these are showing up and everything's good there. So, so you can set your OSD here. This is going to allow you to choose all of your different um, data points that will be showing up on your screen. So this is always always preferred. It's it's really hard for me to fly fly a, a tiny loop without uh, OSD now, just because I'm so used to it. But yeah, this is awesome. This has really helped me save my batteries. Um, in the past, there was a couple different times I've went a little, I uh, pushed it a little bit too far and my voltage got way lower than it should have. So, um, yep, this is where you're going to do your OSD. And then if you go into your CLI, this is where you're going to be able to check your RX ranges. So I'll give you a quick uh, glimpse of what mine are set at right now. So you just go ahead and type in RX range, hit enter. And um, just like with the Beta 65S, I have the RX range for zero set to 2000 ending at 1000 and the same for RX range 2. Uh, RX range 1 and 3 are set the same and uh, they're at their defaults. So uh, yeah, once I got all this done everything was good. I didn't have any problems with this thing and I've been flying it as much as I can really. Um, I think my Tranus is getting a little jealous because I've been spending so much time with my 7E. But yeah, this thing's been great. So check this out. If you guys have any questions definitely feel free to ask. Um, if you're on the Tiny Whoop forum and groups on Facebook, uh, I'm on there. Definitely feel free to ask me any questions there. Um, there is a group that's starting that's going to be able to support the Beta FPV product, so that way if anyone has any issues, they can definitely um, have a dedicated place to check things out. So um, I think that's going to be all for me today. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to ask. Um, I'm more than happy to help anybody with uh, any issues that they're having. Um, yeah, I don't think I left anything out. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody has a good one and I really appreciate you watching my video. And if you could uh, like, share, and subscribe, I would, uh, I would really, really appreciate that also. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be all for me today. So as always, guys, fly safe, fly often.